As of today, The Kenneth Effect is launching a Patreon to support not only this channel's output, but increase the availability of anime information in regards to directors, writers, composers and, well, studios. There are few entities more lovable than Studio Trigger. In an industry where people are always branching out to create new studios, there was no announcement more exciting than the creation of Trigger by Gainax Favorites. You probably know the story by now, but despite being given creative freedom at Gainax, notable staff members such as director Hiroyuki Imaishi and producer Masahiko Otsuka, along with many others, left to create a new smaller studio that would put them out of their comfort zone and force them to take risks and take responsibility for their own decisions. And it's with this courage and trust in their own staff that Trigger was formed. The day was October the 7th, 2011. Gainax's latest show, The Mystic Archives of Dantalian, had concluded to a moderate reception, and one of the studio's best character designers, Atsushi Nishigori, had left earlier that year to create the Idolmaster. And rumours were swirling that many of the people that had created the studio's most iconic shows had left, the belief among some being that most had gone to Kara, Hideaki Anno's personal escape shuttle. But on this day, everything was cleared up when Masahiko Otsuka and Kazuya Masamoto announced Studio Trigger, a brand new studio with the plans to create interesting works but as a smaller team. Animator superstar Yoyoshinari was still at Production IG for some reason, but we'll get to that later because due to the celebrity status of Trigger, they became a team to watch. And that wasn't the only announcement before the end of the month. The truth was, the staff that went to form Trigger weren't executives. They were good at making shows, but getting the business side of things running to be able to produce original shows made things more difficult, which is why Trigger teamed up with 3D studio Sansigen, Liren Films in order to create the holding company Ultra Super Pictures, or USP for short, based in Integral Tower in West Tokyo. The idea is that the company can kind of bring these studios together to consolidate resources, share staff and gain more leverage within anime production, giving more potential for creative control. And with businesses like Good Smile Company, Max Factory and Bushy Road along for the ride, it turns USP into a genuine force of influence within the anime industry. Not only has this led to some shows being made in the first place, but Sans again did 3D work for Trigger's Kill La Kill, Trigger's Hiroyuki Imaishi storyboarded five episodes of Order and Sons Against Black Rock Shooter. The director of Sons Against Bubiki Baranki has done loads of work with Gainax and Trigger in the past, and in 2015, they announced Ultra Super Anime Time. It was a 30 minute time block on Tokyo MX, which aired three short shows back to back, and the majority of these shows were produced by members of Ultra Super Pictures. For example, Trigger's Hacked All the Animation and Space Patrol Lunaco aired there. Slid and Films The Seco Boys did, plus Sons Against Miss Monochrome and Woosa aired there too. Part of the trouble of anime production is getting a time slot for it to air in, but USP took it into their own hands, creating their own block for four seasons and filling it with their own original shows. Unfortunately, Ultra Super Anime Time is now over, but it represented these guys' dedication towards new and creative projects. But before we jump too far ahead with other stuff, let's talk about Studio Trigger's first work. It wasn't Kill la Kill or even Inferno Cop because Trigger's first debut work was The Idol Master Episode 17. <laughs> I mentioned how Atsushi Nishigori left Gainax to create the Idolmaster earlier, but by no means did he break ties or anything like that, and the show ended up being staffed by many former Gainax animators to the point that 60 of the animators that worked on Gurren Lagann were also credited for the Idolmaster. 
So once Trigger was formed, who better to give them their first job than the character designer behind Gurren Lagann and Pantheon Stocking, Atsushi Nishigori himself. And despite the studio having only just been set up, production had the confidence to give the reins of episode 17 to them. With animation directed by future Kill la Kill character designer Sushio and Trigger animators on staff, it was here that Trigger began, with idols and good animation. There has been much said about the visual personality of Trigger shows, usually pointing to the different but equally fun styles of animation unique to the staff. And whilst I'm going to have to save a full discussion on the staff of Trigger for the second part of this studio spotlight, I can say that the family has gotten so wide that in just five years, the studio has become an embodiment of what late 2000s Gynax really was. But now with a smaller crew, everything feels more collaborative and the big point for from every single interview with a Trigger or freelance staff member is that when they're at the studio, they're made to feel like equals. Even the industry legends will go around talking to new key animators, asking if they have any ideas or suggestions. Sushio once said, I go back and forth between Kara and Trigger. When I come back from Kara after a while to this noisy environment, I always think, these guys are damn crazy. And that's kind of indicative of the boyish nature that the studio represents, a culture of trash talking and toys. When Hiroshi Kobayashi was working on Kill la Kill, he spotted the proposal for what would eventually become Kiss Niver, and initially remarked that a show about emotions just didn't fit the image he had of what Trigger would produce. Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is that one of the big priorities within the studio is that a show should be just as fun to make as it is to watch, and over these many years, Trigger has become a studio full of good friends constantly elevating each other. But I've been missing one person out, and this person happens to be the most important Trigger staff member at this very moment. Please welcome the creator and director of Little Witch Academia, your Yoshinari. As the creator of Little Witch Academia, it's very relevant to talk about Yo Yoshinari and how he has become a hugely influential force that has shaped and inspired much of modern effects animation. But it all started with two brothers accelerating each other to succeed, Ko Yoshinari and Yo Yoshinari. Real names, I swear. So, it was Ko Yoshinari, Yo's older brother, that got him into animation in the first place. Whilst Yo enjoyed drawing, it was Ko that wanted to get into animation and he needed an assistant. So, in the traditional ways of the older brother, he put his younger brother to work, helping him. Through learning together and being equally reliant, they'd managed to teach themselves animation, so much so that when they went to animation school, they were just trying things out and playing around. But it eventually became time to go professional, and whilst Koyoshinari was creating animation so incredibly detailed that it often gets mistaken for 3D, Ko realised that Yo had a future working for Gynax, and suggested he apply there. And he did! He sent out applications to two studios with Gynax as his preference, and he ended up at... Madhouse. So, he got settled in, and three months later, he gets a call. It was from Gynax, because they just realised that they'd accidentally skipped over his application. Yor never thought he was good enough for Gynax in the first place, but his brother disagreed. So now that he was settled in at Madhouse, he told them that he was quitting animation just because he didn't want to have to say, I got a better offer at Gynax. If you want to give this story a title, it'd probably go something like His brother is always right and Yo is way too humble Because when he got to Gynax, he was surprised that many of the staff his age didn't really know much about the world of animation And Yoshinari is the exact opposite Imaishi once said that Yoshinari's key animation is the coolness of many different kinds of animators all bundled into a single vessel 
It's an awesome quote, and it recognizes that during his time at animation school, he was watching and finding out more about all of these incredible animators at the time. He even watched puppet and sand animation just to get a good idea of what animation could be. And this eventually led to his incredible work at Gainax, most notably on Neon Genesis Evangelion, with exciting mechanical action and effects. Skip forwards a few years and he's the mecha designer for Gurren Lagann and animating some of the show's most important scenes, teaming up with Sushio for his Parallel Works film, and after he spent a year at Production IG for some reason, he finally joined Trigger in 2012, announcing the creation of Little Witch Academia for Anime Mirai. <laughs> Little Witch Academia is a new type of trigger. Imaishi may be seen as the face of the studio, but over the years, Yoyo Shinari has become one of the go-to people when you think of good animation as a whole. And this isn't just recognised by audiences, but also by many of the staff. Yoshinari is a shy person, but much like Akko admires Chariot in Little Witch Academia, animators admired Yoshinari. That's not even my analogy. Little Witch Academia animator Yuto Dendo said that. No matter what praise I give to Yo Yoshinari, I can be confident that those that work with him can one-up me on that every time. And my claim that it's a new type of trigger isn't just projection, but rather since Little Witch Academia was a part of the Young Animators Project, the show featured scenes from newer talents spotlighting them and projecting their careers. The film featured character designs that whilst at first glance were fairly simple, provided a scaffold for incredibly fun animation that these guys consistently provided. Throughout the entire process, Yo was talking about different ways the characters could move and how they could express themselves within the project. And now with the TV version, even though it's no longer a part of the Young Animators project, there's still an effort to give these guys a stage, with Shuhei Honda on character designs and other new animators attached. And there's one other staff member that you might not expect, Ko Yoshinari. His older brother is working for him this time. Thanks for watching The Caliper Effect, there is a huge amount to cover in regards to Trigger, so there will be a second part covering the studio's place in the industry today and the people that have built its image. Please consider donating to the Caniper Effect Patreon to both speed up this process and give me access to new information to make future videos all the more valuable. And I highly recommend you read the three-part interview with Yo Yoshinari available on Wave Motion Canon that goes into way more depth. Both links are in the description.